Hello everyone, Andrew back again. 7th of March 2021. Beautiful weather. Bees are working very hard. And today I start a new video, especially for beginners. I know there's a big demand on that such information, so I'll try to put maximum uh, tips for you and based on my own experience. Uh, I spend a lot of time for to search videos and other uh, information about beekeeping for beginners in UK and in Ireland. And I couldn't find great information which you can get real how to do it, why to do this, why to do that, bits and pieces. So it's really hard for a beginner to understand why is he doing this, why is he doing that, what's, what's involved with all this, right? So I'll show you how am I doing, I'll show you how simple it is because there's a lot of people starting beekeeping and after getting really bad results the bees are dying like over the winter or whatever so they just given up. I show you it's a simple process and we start from zero point and we go in slowly and show you all during the season uh, how to do it, how am I doing, right? So basically, if you follow me, you will see the results you get at the end of the year. But you better join uh, Beekeeping Association as well for to get some basic information about bees, about uh, who is occupying the hive. The beekeeping is a rewarding hobby. It takes years to understand the bees. I'll try to bring information, simple information to you so you can understand what you're doing and why you're doing this. And this is your free course of beekeeping for especially for new people. Now what you need for to start as a beekeeper, you need a suit first of all. Don't buy too tight suit, buy one size bigger so you can feel comfortable in the suit. Something like that. Could be different color, different shape, but something like that, first of all. The second thing, uh, you better have just a single mask like that, so if you don't go uh, like fully for half of a day or something to do beekeeping, you can just wear a mask for a quick look. So this is handy, so you need to put full overall on you. Then, of course, you need a smoker. I'm not going to show you how to light smoker, all these bits. You can get that easy enough on the, the other videos on light. That's a simple thing, right? Now, you need a, a hive tool. There's different types of hive tools. I have, I try different type of, of hive tools. Uh, they're small ones, they they handy to have them in the pocket. Uh, say, the long ones, they handy for to clean the wax, but obviously they doing the same job, more or less. This, this, this one here is my favorite one. The way I have them marked, marked like that, so if they fall into the grass, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's easier to spot it. The next thing what you need, uh, you need gloves. Like I never wearing heavy gloves, like welding gloves as you know, most of beekeepers. I usually wear gloves like this. It's a simple latex gloves. Oh, like that. If you have aggressive bees, you can put double glow but I'm not putting in any double glows because my bees are not aggressive and those glows are especially <coughs> for to protect you from propolis because it gets very sticky and after you go on over 20 30 hives you can just just swap them around or you can you put new ones on so you need the glows now we go to uh, the workshop and I show you the hive and what the hive contains. I walk here to the workshop where I, we usually assemble the frames. Of course you will need as a new beekeeper some other bits and pieces like a brush for to brush out the bees of the frames and later on uh, you would need honey extractors 
for to extract your honey nice for to open the cuppings of the honey frames then you would need some filters uh, jars labels and bits and pieces like that <clears throat> so you will get that as you go as you uh, continue your your beekeeping so I try to explain you you know basic things and I'm not professional uh, movie maker so if I'm missing something don't hesitate ask the questions I'll try to answer them either in comments or in my next videos so what's the hive contents <clears throat> Uh, I usually using two different types of hives, it's timber and uh, <coughs> polystyrene ones. That's polystyrene, it's very light. The reason I have two of them, the timber ones I use them for the honey. If I harvest the honey, it's only from timber because timber is a natural material. Uh, it's uh, and it's my own choice which I use. I'm not using polystyrene for the uh, for the honey. I using timber. Now what the <coughs> polystyrene I using because I produce large amount of nukes of small version of colonies bees. So they just rise a little bit better in the polystyrene because of heat resistance. So I using them as as I rise in the numbers. But for honey is timber. Now this is the floor, floor has a mesh, it's for ventilation, then it's inspection tray which slides in from the back. This is the entrance block, you either put it maximum open, so it's about 5 inches open here. Or in some situations you put just uh, at a small entrance. Later on, I explain you why you need those two. <clears throat> Inspection tray I keep in from spring until end of September, sometimes October, keeping here open, say four or five inches, say from three up to up to even halfway if it's very warm which rarely happened but up to halfway open so but for winter i take it out altogether if you close that completely so there is no ventilation from the bottom except you have little entrance or bigger entrance and that's it and that's definitely not enough so for the full colony you definitely need open mesh floor inspection tray it's therefore when you have your mite treatment you could you can have it say open only a couple of inches so the mites are falling through the mesh on top of that uh, insecting tray so you can calculate how many mites fell down after your treatment that's that's called inspection tray so don't ever keep it closed during the season I also keep in top complete airtight. So they propolizing this plastic to the brood box completely. So they have complete air and this hole here is usually covered with your with your feeder. So airtight top open mesh floor. There's only two types of, of ventilation. Open mesh floor and top over airtight or the other way around complete closed floor solid floor with no mesh nothing and open top there's a little uh, holes there in the roof a uh, little uh, mesh there so the bees won't come out that's the other way around but i using this type so open mesh floor it's the handiest for me and it's uh, it's more professional if you do numbers so this is this is the best way now the next one it's a very similar There's an entrance block in the polystyrene and inspection tray in, in polystyrene. Now you have your brood box with the frames. 
how to assemble the frames you can see in different videos it's available on youtube it's a simple process uh, of course i'm not using hammers and nails i using compressors and it's low because we're selling large amount of frames so it's it's kind of professional way so as a new beekeeper you just need a little nail pin nails and small hammer and you assemble frames the frames has a wire inside the wax those little little wires here they uh, holding the wax in position in the timber surround of frame now the brood box <coughs> this is national brood box that's most popular about 90 over 90 percent beekeeper in ireland in ireland and uk as far as i know use national and it contains 11 frames <coughs> in here there's a 12 frames obviously it barely fits 12 frames but for beekeeping for when you have a bees in it it's only 11 frames and you have to keep them tight to each other you can put last one out a little bit and this one last one out slightly but the middle ones you better keep them tight to each other those frames are called dn4 frames what does that means uh, they have special dividers so it's uh, between the centers of the frames between the wax the foundation obviously is 35 mil it's a it's a british standard uh on those frames so you keep them together <coughs> yeah usually keep them to one side slightly slightly five mil out pushing them to one side and five mil out and in here is a bigger gap so i shoot that one a little bit but those ones are tight to each other and if they get propolis because bees are usually usually propolizing uh, those parts of the frames so you you clean the propolis because and then the distance between the frames rising up to 37 38 mil and more so you clean that propolis frequently and just keep them together now if you uh, don't have full 11 frames occupied by bees what you do then say you have say six or seven frames of bees here only most of the beekeepers just say there's bees occupying this part and there's no bees in that part but most of the beekeepers just filling all this spa this space with the frames empty frames it's absolutely wrong and I explain you why I use a dummy board that is the dummy board I make it that myself there's a lot of dummy boards available you can buy them online in the shop from made from timber insulated they are actually expensive or whatever or, or not expensive but I making them from king span or extra term or whatever it's a uh, I'm not sure it's an inch or 20 I think it's 20, 20 mil thickness so I couldn't <coughs> pieces like that these ones here right now and uh, a sec. this is the underlay which usually goes under the laminate flooring right I cut in little pieces like that and I glue them to the sides with the glue gun very simple I'm not going to show you it's simple process right you just put some glue then you put that strip and you turn around and you press it down to keep it evenly pressed evenly so it's not bent like that and the same the other side it's about 10 mil width of that strip 
both sides and then I use in sellotape it doesn't matter the color it doesn't matter this one's green this one was red and I tape that around so the bees are not eating that polystyrene here otherwise if you don't protect the sides the edges they're going to be big holes that the bees will be eating them and bring them out of the hive so after all the job done it looked like this it's very light and it fits perfectly now you have seven frames of bees you're using your dummy board seven frames of bees is not it's not strong colony it's just half of the colony wait barely and so they no need to heat this space they no need this space so far they only heating because they have brood and they have larvae and eggs and queen is running around laying eggs so you kind of you keep them kind of bit squashed so you first of all this is insulation as well like you insulate them and you keep them squashed so they no need to heat the whole space which they not require at the moment they just need that so that's the way i use in this doing board as you rise in your colony you bring it that doing board forward and usually the way you rise in your colony you're showing, showing out last frame here you put a new frame of drone comb or foundation here and the very same on the other side your new frame the last frame out and you put your second frame that that's the way i rise in colony and then again do me board and job done as long as that rise up to the full 11 frames i take in the do me board out so that's the way I have a lot more in the other the other stores. So those so again you can put frames to one side and you can use one dummy board. But you can also keep the frames in the middle and you can use two dummy boards, which is better insulation. And your entrance kind of at the middle it's a bit handier but it's just double amount of dummy boards if it's large amount of dummy boards it's just double amount you have to store them somewhere obviously so that's the dummy board on now so we have your floor you have your dummy boards you have your frames your bees inside here then I put in plastic over that plastic has a it's heavy duty plastic I put a hole in the plastic that way just bending out and I put in crossways to the frames now after this you need a feeder if you need to feed your bees or stimulate your bees or feed your bees for the winter you would need feeder I use different type of feeders that's my favorite one it uh, could be a tanger one could be different other feeders but this is about two and a half liter feeder and i have a large amount of them so this is kind of my favorite one so i put in that feed that hole just on top of the hole in the plastic then the little coop <coughs> and then your your lead so the beads and you fill that with the syrup amount of syrup uh, for feeding stimulation it's it's different explain you later how this works so you have your feeder on top of that then you need to hide this feeder somehow protected from from goes down like you have to keep the heat on in so you need a an empty super super is the part of the hive which usually contains super frames for the honey but it also can be used to hide uh, feeder in. Then after 
I personally use commercial. That's national super. This is commercial super. The reason I use commercial super on top of the national brood boxes just uh, commercial frames here. <coughs> Commercial frames just bet, better fits into the honey extractors I have. That's the only reason. And it's uh, smaller looks and just more practical for me. So you have your feeder in. Now you have to fill it with a syrup. My advice is while you rise in your colonies, don't put too much of a syrup. Big strong colony which has lots of brood requires only between 500 and 700 grams syrup or nectar if there's there's nectar flow a day a small nuke requires around 150 grams up to 200 grams of nectar or syrup a day so you have to only put if it's say average colony you can put 400 grams 500 grams maximum don't put full feeder what happens if you put full feeder you only making it worse bees gonna take the whole syrup in one day or maximum two days time fill all the cells the empty cells which is for queen to lay eggs in so queen has no room to lay and by feeding that way you stopping queen from laying and that's the main point you have to give them only portion they require daily don't overfeed them if you overfeed them you only make it situation worse so you fill your feeder every day for an average colony three four hundred grams if there is no nectar flow of course if there is a bit of flow you have to work out around that so that is situation when you rise in your colonies. You also can put double amount of syrup, but don't feed it every day, every second day. Okay? Every three days, triple amount. It's so, so like better, you know, fill it daily or every second day with double portion. After you have your syrup in, now the syrup I'm mixing one and a half part of sugar to one part of warm water nearly hot water mix it up and pour it in then you have to keep that syrup warm i use insulation pillows for that purpose so i put in pillow to keep the heat of the syrup in if it's cold syrup the bees won't take it it's very hard it needs to be really strong colony and then they will take a cold syrup but if it's a weaker colony they won't take your syrup and it gets moldy and it gets gets fermented and everything so uh, one and a half even more could be nearly up to two kilos of sugar to one part of water that's the syrup i given them in springtime so your pillow is on <coughs> and it's the roof the roof has aluminium cover so you can put hot smoker on it and it has silver insulation inside as well for to keep it warm so roof on that set of the hive you need while you rising your bees in the spring or while you're doing nooks rising nooks up to the full colony so it's for weaker colony so that's one done most common situation uh, beekeepers have during the honey flow so when you have your colony rise up to the full size at least full size of one brood box what are we doing next so your colony is strong for to harvest any type of flow at the moment it's good weather so they're ready to go what you need, you need a queen excluder. <coughs> There's different types of queen, metal ones and plastic ones, all different types of queen excluders. 
They more or less, they be, could be different prices, but they doing the same job. What the Queen Excluder does is the uh, space between those bars is standardized between 4.2 and 4.5 millimeters. So the bees can go through it, but the Queen can go through it. Bee has bigger breasts, she just won't go through that, uh, those bars. So if you put the Queen Excluder, <coughs> doesn't matter which one. So we use that one. Put the queen excluder on top of your brood box. Then you put in super, <clears throat> and you fill the super with the super frames. I put in ten frames in the super. Space them so they have equal space all the way down. After that, I put in plastic. And over plastic, there's another thing, another part of the hive, which which called chrome board. It could be timber, could be polycarbonate, doesn't matter, it's the same job. It's timber all around, it's nine millimeter space. Uh, the chrome board keeps nine millimeter space between your top lugs, the top of your frames, and uh, uh, like the chrome board itself. <coughs> The plywood so you put that so you're not squashing the bees but the reason i using plastic uh, there's a lot of videos when the beekeeper trying to open the hive and the chrome board is completely glued to the frames with the wax they trying to lift it they sometimes even break in the chrome board the plastic first of all <coughs> preventing all these gluing with the wax and the second thing See, the reason the bees are gluing chrome board is they making top airtight. That was the plastic does. It just airtight in the top. So the bees lose, using less wax, first of all, and it's easier to work with. You're just lifting your chrome board and pulling your plastic. Very easy. So I'm using plastic all the time. Then your chrome board, and then you're putting your own back. So the bees are harvesting honey, going through the queen excluder. Queen can go through the queen excluder, so she cannot lay in the uh, super box frames. So it's only for honey. And that's the most common situation with the hive when you harvest in your uh, nectar flow. Now, one more tip for you. Banana box. It's perfect for to store your frames. If you stagger them, 17 frames fit, perfect. Very light, durable, absolutely brilliant job. Watch for more videos. That's everything for today. We're going to talk about bits you need as a beginner. YouTube channel Irish Bee. Ask the questions, don't hesitate. I'll try to answer them as we go along.